attitude you need to convey if you are going to continue to operate. In John 10.10, 10, Christ said, I've come to give you life and give you life um, abundantly. So which means any part of you that is not operating abundantly in life, whether it's your spirit, whether it's your soul, whether it's your body, whether it's your resource, you go, I want to put life in it. But typically, just like if I want to give you water abundantly, you need something to catch it what? Wit. You need a container. Typically, God requires an attitude or a position to give you what he wants to give you. It's already ready. It's, he's, it's never him. He's always ready. The question is, are you in the right position or state to receive it? So it's important to prepare you um, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, and physically in the right position to receive. Say position. Position. To receive. To receive. So I need to show you God position, and I want to show you a position that I strongly encourage you to adapt or adhere to in Jesus' name. Are we at Psalms 103? Yes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great are his mercies, mm -hmm. his mercy, and loving kindness towards those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. So as the, high, the heaven is higher than the earth, that's so much, think of, you can't even perceive how high it is, that's so much God's mercy is towards what? His church, you. Amen. He said that the heaven is high as the, higher than the earth, so are my mercies towards you. Amen. So every so often we love to judge ourselves and judge others and how God is going, I don't want to hear your judgment. I want to show you my excessive what? Mercy. Yes. Isn't that lovely? Hallelujah. That is what I call expression of love. Amen. Amen. He wanted to put it in such a way that you can hardly fought the moment he loves you. That's what today's message is about. Can you fought the moment he loves you? Can you even perceive it? And I went on to say, he said, because I love you so much in verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgression from us. He said, I have so much mercy towards you as the heaven I and the earth. And as in regards to what you'll do wrong, as the east is far from the west, that's how far I move it from you. Amen. And the reason he does it that way, what he's trying to tell you, that's how much I want to love up in you. Oh, Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. Mm. You see, he had, he, had to, he had to put it, he didn't need to put it so out of proportion, but he did it intentionally for you to understand. Because we always go, well, because I, I curse past the child, God mercy will stop or God love. You, go, you need to get perspective, son and daughter, sons and daughters. Your perspective is skewed. Yeah. As the heaven is higher than the earth, that's what my kind of mercy measure. You can't even perceive such a thing. And as the east is from the west, that's so how far I remove your wrongdoing from you. Uh -huh. Do you understand this kind of love? Say, Lord, help me to understand that kind of love. Lord, help me to understand this. It's crazy kind of love. Yeah. Crazy kind of love. Yeah. You know, and verse 13 said, as a father loves and pity his children, mm. so the Lord loves and pity those who fear him. Amen? And revere. Amen? You see? And reverence, worship, and in awe. Amen? See, so just as your regular father loves and pities you, the Lord loves and pities those who fear with reverence. Amen? Worship and awe. And verse 14 said, for he knows our frame. He earnestly remember. He don't forget what you're like. You don't surprise him. This is why he has to give you so much mercy and remove your transgression so far. For he knows and he's constantly reminding himself, they are only flesh and blood. He said, for he knows our frame. He earnestly, constantly remember and imprint on his heart that we are dust. He doesn't forget. He doesn't go, well, Pastor Charles is an angel. He shouldn't do that. <laughs> no. No. What do you go? I want to send him mercy upon what? Mercy. <laughs> and I want to remove his wrongdoing so far from him that he can't find it. You see, Satan is hoping you don't catch this trick. And he's always going, look the wrong you're doing. God's going to punish you. God's going to hold it against you. He don't want to know this kind of scripture, this kind of context. And he's forever trying to tell God, look what they've done. Look what Jazzy has done. And God going, you see the east from the west, huh? That's what Jesus' blood does. 
You see the hurt in the heavens. That's the kind of mercy I'm sending towards you. If we can fathom, conceptualize such an idea or concept, I believe you will have a brilliant attitude, one that will allow the Lord to administer in your life in such a way that what people call miracles will happen in your life, simply because how much God loves you, how much he wants to do for you, has done for you, and want to continue, and you will be in the right position to receive. So receive. 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 Quickly. Let me tell you a little bit of background very quickly. Um, um, the, 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 the prophet, during this time, he was um, at this family house, and they didn't have any children. And she didn't want, she had settled the matter that she's not going to have no children. The prophet tell her she's going to have a child. As he tell her, she said, well, you don't need to do it. He goes, no, I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen to you. And she got a child. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is Elisha. So after she got the child, she's so happy then the child died. Mm -hmm. So she had settled in her mind, she's not going to have a kid. The prophet come and prophesy she's going to have a kid. She got the kid and then the kid died. Now wait a look, this is enough to get her very angry and upset. So she decides she's going now to see Elijah. Elijah is on Mount Carmel at the time. Now look at her attitude. We keep what you read in Psalms 103, 11 to 14 in perspective. How high is the heaven? That's how high is what? Mercies. How wide is the east from the west? That's how far he took away what? Transgression. Your sin, your wrongdoing. As a father, remember and shows pity to his children. You never so often, my children, they're annoying me whatsoever. But I'm, and I'm always remembering they're still what? Children. Amen? Not so much. You understand? God remember you are thus. So look what happened. Now look at our attitude because you know God. Let's pick it up from verse, where did I say? Verse 25. So she saddled a donkey and tell her servant, you know, do not slacken with the highest pace. I want you to take me to Elisha. So she set out, verse 25, she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gigazi, you see, his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shunammites. Run to meet her and say, well. Is it well with you? Well with your husband? Well with your child? And she answered, what? It is well. Do you know what's, what happened to her child? The child died. Mm -hmm. Do you listen to what she's saying here? Yes. Our child died. Elisha sent, he could see her mouth off. His servant. He has he said, go and meet her. Because I see she coming way in yonder. Ask her, there's only three things she has. She has a husband, she has her, she has a child. If she's coming to see me from so far, you understand? Something must have gone wrong. He asked her, are you okay? She goes, yes. Is your husband okay? Yes. Is your child okay? She said what? Yes. But her child died. She had took the child and put it on Elijah's bed. Elijah was staying up in the upper room. And she took the child and the child died and put it on Elijah's bed. But the woman, she has such faith in God. Just like Abraham, beyond reasoning. No God will still give him Isaac. She said, it is well. I don't think there are much greater example of faith except with someone like Abraham and someone with killing Isaac and so forth. She has absolute trust and faith that it is what? Well. Just like how God give her a thing and God take a thing, God can give her a what? Back a thing. I find this amazing. You see, the enemy is always trying to move you from trusting God, making you forget how much mercy God gives to you. How much God doesn't notice you're wrong. How much he remembers you are thus. She has such confidence. He went on to say, I find that amazing. Verse 27. When she came to the mountain, to the man of God, she climbed to his feet. Giazi came to, amen, thrust her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for our soul is bitter and vexed within. Amen? Within her. And the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. At the time, Elisha couldn't see the child was dying. God was blocking him. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't tell why she was what? 
upset. But her perspective to receive was what? I know it's going to be all well. I don't care what's going on. I know it's going to work out. Do you believe Elijah raised her child? Yes, he did. I can't go through the passage. You should. Our perspective of faith was fantastic. One of the reasons many of us doesn't receive the abundance of life that John 10.10 10 talk about is because your perspective is not well. When he, when he calls upon you and he goes, is it well with you? No, Lord, it's not well. This is wrong and that is wrong and this is wrong and that is wrong. You immediately forget three concepts right away. His mercies, your transgression, and your dusk. And every time you forget it, you'll complain instead of praise. And every time you complain instead of praise, you've changed position. You've moved out of receiving. Do you understand? The mercies can't flow. The highlighting of God can't take place in your life. It's just a little test of faith. I encourage you to be like the Shunammite woman. I don't care what you're going through. You just have to know, I have a father who remember I am dust, who took away my transgression, and whose mercy is so high. If you can't catch this trick, I'm not sure you'll catch today. I'm not sure you'll catch walking with God. If you catch this trick, I'm telling you, God will move powerful in your life because you will not block him. You'll constantly be in a state like the Shunammite that you can what? Receive him despite how he changes or move things. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. This is what Job, no, this was Job's old concept. Job was like, you took transgression from me. I am dust. You have mercy. I don't care what's going on. You understand? I know you'll save me. If not, tell me why you wouldn't do it. He just hold God to God's character. This was his old thing. If you, if I, I encourage you, try to catch this and frame it properly. Mm. If you could, wonderfulness will happen. Hallelujah. You have the Lord simply because you are God's child. You accept Jesus. You have to know beyond a shadow of doubt. It is well already. Amen. I don't care what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what is going on. You have to keep ministering to yourself. It is well with me. Amen. It always will be well. When the enemy goes, how could you say this? Simply because of the mercies. My sins have been moved so far. Amen. And I am just operating in dust. Hallelujah. Do you understand this? Jack, were you going to ask a question? No, because what you were saying, um, Miles was saying, she goes, um, complain for me. Yes, she is right. You just have to know where to stand. Go back and meditate on that little scripture. Both of them. Catch the attitude. And stop falling to your circumstance. But fall to how much mercies flow your way. How far he has removed your craziness from you. And how much he remember who you are. Amen. A blind set. God doesn't forget. You don't surprise him. Amen.